advantage. Uh, please welcome to the stage Julie Larson Green, who's the Chief Experience Officer at Qualtrics, in conversation with Vicky Goldfin, uh, Head of Digital at Accenture Ireland. Good morning, everyone. The weather got nice today morning. compared to yesterday. Um, which is brilliant. Um, delighted to be here and delighted to be joined by um, Julie. Um, Julie was previously uh, Chief Experience Officer at Microsoft and now the Chief Experience Officer at Coltrex. And Julie, everything I've kind of heard from you, even talking to you this morning and, and read uh, on what you've been talking about, you have a real passion for kind of transformation and especially about transforming culture and that experience piece. Right. Um, and when we hear the word transformation, it tends to be a big word and everyone has a different sort of kind of meaning for it. How would you describe transformation? Sure, I think I spent 25 years at Microsoft watching the company go from a very technology fo focused company to much more of a, an experience like company. And what I learned during that time is that uh, transformation can't just be one aspect of your business. It's not about making a breakthrough product or having an amazing uh, brand campaign or a marketing pitch. It's really about thinking holistically about what you stand for in a company and then making sure all your systems from the way you incent employees all the way through the product experiences you create, the customers, that has an all an impact on the brand and what you stand for. And so aligning all those things is what truly brings you transformation. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting in terms of kind of what the brand stands for, because certainly sort of research we've done, like the, a company's purpose and, and, as you say, what it stands for and, it's, and, and kind of how it actually sort of translates even to the employee experience and what that means. Because often when we talk about experience, we sort of automatically go to a customer experience and that's important. But the employee experience as well, I mean, you've talked about how you create cultures where you know, anyone from anywhere can come up with a good idea. It's sort of nurturing that type of culture. What do you think is important about employee experience? I think ex employee experience is the thing that we tend to forget about. You know, early on stages, especially in startup companies, you're really focused on sales and product, and that's really where your focus are. But everything about what you do in your employee culture really shows up in your products and shows up in the experiences that you deliver to customers. So, you know, it's fairly logical to think that employees that are engaged and happy provide a better customer experience, but also what you value in the organization, whether you value collaboration or you value individuality, those things also show up in what you deliver to customers. So it's really important to start with that employee culture as the base for transformation. And, and I mean, you, you've worked for giant. Enorm, giant companies and smaller companies, right. and I guess our audience here work for a, a really diverse, not different com companies and have had different experiences. Right. How do you know if you're getting it right? So, Sure, I think part of it is measuring how you're doing. So, you know, my role at, at Qualtrics is called Chief Experience Officer, and I run both the people operations side and a big part of the product side. And the role itself is to try to get at the, the threads or the, the relationship between what you do in your employee experience and what you do in your culture, and I get to play around with that. What, how you know whether it's right is um, through measurement. And so, you know, the CEO has spent most of their time thinking about the operational health of a company where they're really thinking about, you know, what, what's your sales numbers? Um, what's the attrition rate of your employees? What's the attrition rate of your, your customers? How are you bringing in new customers? They're looking at those numbers. And often that's a lagging indicator of success for a company. So my role as chief experience officer is to measure the experience health of the company and understand how people are feeling about thinking about regarding the things that we do as a company and then give you the tools to bring those two things together, the operational data plus that experience data that gives you a real good picture and hopefully a, you know, a more insightful picture of what's really going on that helps you improve your business. Yeah. Maybe we'll do our own measurement. So if, who here thinks that the place that they work has a really great employee experience that's sort of getting this right? If you put your hands up. I wow. see one. Not many, <laughs> from what I can see. Who I mean, thinks that it's a really important thing to get right? 
Right. Okay. I mean, you see it Good. in the news. You usually see it when it's messed up. You know, that we all can think of companies where the employee experience and what they value in the organization has showed up externally uh, and to, in a negative way uh, for their business and had a yeah. big impact. I mean, in the U.S., there's several companies that have been in the news recently around that. And then there's companies like Disney who are are very focused, you know, they call their employees cast members, and they really think differently about what they're, what they're trying to achieve, what they're trying to do, and it shows up in absolutely everything that they do. And that role, Chief Experience Officer, where you've got product, responsibility for product and people, that's quite unusual, really. I mean, traditionally, people, HR, product, right. marketing, or product. So uh, how do you make that, how, what's the secret sauce you have to make that role successful, bringing those two things together? Well, Qualtrics builds experience management tools, and so my role as chief experience officer for the experience management company is to really help invent that role as we see it a, as an emerging C-suite role that's important and, and uh, to sit in that C-suite so you can look at you know, the numbers from a sales side, and you can look at the employee feedback, and you can look at the customer feedback, and you have access to all that data, which generally is, stays up there. It's private. It doesn't get down into the organization. So someone who's able to bring those two pieces together about how people are feeling and thinking and regarding and what, how operationally things are progressing, yeah. and combining those two things together is a unique new thing. And in this kind of experience economy, you know, that's going to be your, your competitive differentiator yeah. you know, on your experience. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can copy lots of technology, but the way you think about and deliver the holistic experience is what's going to be, you know, define a, a leader from a follower in that space. And, and the challenge of doing that when certainly I think we've, you know, we've talked a lot in the last, I'd say, 12 to 18 months, everyone's talking about personalization, 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 um, including us, right? So, so making that very unique to the individual, that experience. But in the drive for personalization, you can get it wrong. So, if, you know, if you assume the, custo the company really understands you and then they get it wrong, it kind of feels very clunky. Where do you get that balance right between delivering a personalized experience and making sure, you know, you kind of get it sure. right? Sure. Uh, if you, you know, we all have examples of, of you know, you, you bought something one time for your niece and now Barbie dolls are all over everywhere you go. And, and so that's not personalization. That's, you know, targeted advertising. And yeah. so personalization is really understanding what is going on at, um, with the individual and then providing touch points for them to, to give you feedback or to give you hints or signal about, about what they're looking for and then in real time kind of changing those things. So instead of... Uh, you know, making guesses on the back end. You're looking at hints for what people are doing and, and then suggesting things and giving them opportunities to say, no, that's not right, or yes, that, that more of that, please. And what would be sort of examples of those signals that you think really sort of are giving you the insight into that behavior and preference? Yeah, so when you think about, we, we talked a little bit about employee experience. We go back to that a little bit. You know, the annual engagement survey used to be the only thing that people do. So today, modern companies are, are thinking about all the individual touch points that someone might be going through. So if I went on parental leave, I might do, get a survey when I come back about how, 30 days after I return about how I'm experiencing the transition back to work from being on parental leave. You know, that's a personalization to the situation that the person's in. And so thinking through those touch points for both customers and employees and putting in the natural flow of what they're, they're doing and, the, and how they're thinking, not how you're thinking about pushing, mm. pushing your agenda, but what, where are they at? And that's, that's the key to good user experience as well, is putting yourself, taking yourself out of it and putting yourself in the shoes of, of someone else. So it's, it's using empathy to design your experience. And I mean, we've seen a lot of research that sort of, you know, certainly when there's been leadership surveys with CEOs saying, you know, actually we're getting our experience pretty right, more right than wrong. But yet when that translates from a customer research perspective, that the, the kind of numbers aren't really correlating, and there's this big gap that we talk yes. about. Yes, and we, talk, we call it the experience gap, yeah. right? The, the difference between what you think you're putting out in the world and how the world is experiencing it. And the, the 
difference between those two things is the you know, success of your business is the future success of your business is measured in that gap. Yeah. And, and where do you see that sort of that that closing of the gap really working? What are the sort of things that companies have done that have really started to bring that gap closer to, together? Yeah, I think uh, it really comes from understanding what you're trying to achieve and creating that hypothesis for for what you want to measure. So uh, Spotify is a customer of ours and and they're, you know, hard in uh, competing with uh, iTunes and then so they have a lot of competitors in the music space and so they came up with this feature that they wanted to deliver that was about letting you skip ads and in their free product and so generally before that you had to pay and and in order to skip ads so they thought this would be a great win for people and more people would sign up and experience Spotify and eventually convert to paying customers. And they knew from their operational data, from measuring the transactions, that no one was using the feature. And they didn't understand why, because they thought people would love it. And so they had to really go into that, understand the experience. And they, they found out it was a pretty simple, no one knows you know, they used Qualtrics and they found out no one really knows about the feature. And so they had to think of different ways that they could advertise it to people and get people to know that that capability existed. And last quarter, um, last quarter Q4 of 2018, they added 9 million subscribers just by changing their advertising. But it was that combination of understanding the problem from an operational sense, but then looking for the answer in the experience data and bringing those two things together. together. Yeah. And, and so when, so, you know, we all talk about, as we said, we started the conversation off that we use transformation as a term a lot, um, and, and everyone has different sort of definitions of it. Um, but it's, it's kind of messy, isn't it, transformation? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it's not like you do that study one time and you're done. It's a, it's a process, it's a way you build in the thinking of what you do to continually measure, continually create hypotheses, measure the operational health and the experience health at the same time, bring those two things together and then do it again. So you know, either keep measuring the same thing and, and until you feel confident, but you're always gonna have to re-measure and then there's new hypotheses. It's a, it's a way of doing business, it's a way of using real-time data to adjust what you're doing. How do you create, uh, a, a, I guess, a culture and an environment where that constant sort of iteration and, and learning, especially I think as, you know, organizations get bigger, they grow, they get more complex. Right. And sometimes when you get bigger, more process is put on top of you. Yes. Um, rather than less. Um, how do you create that culture in a big organization that sort of, so that people can still... Sure really drive that type of change? To me, for, for the teams that I run, it's all about keeping their curiosity and their, and their interest for learning. Yeah. And so making sure that people want to know the answer and they want to know if they're, um, what they're putting out there is their hypothesis is actually right. And so you can r and kind of set up the environment so that people understand that continuous learning is part of the job and part of what you expect. So, you know, putting in training programs, putting in customer um, education sessions, bringing people in to talk to you, all these things that you're, show that you're interested in your employee experience about getting in touch with the customer, about them continuing to learn, mm -hmm. about uh, that that is part of what's expected. That shows up in, in how you think about what you do and what you deliver all the way through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're in the middle, I guess, of a sort of cultural change with the, uh, with the acquisition. Maybe you could share a little bit about that oh, sure. journey with, uh, with so everyone. I don't know if some, uh, everyone knows, but we were uh, acquired by SAP in the beginning of this year. And so we were going from this, you know, 2,000 person startup into this big giant company. And, uh, and culturally, we, we are actually quite a match. And so what's been really fun is to explore the idea. I mean, since 77% of all the world's transactions run on SAP, we have all this access to all this operational data out there. And then combined with the experience data that Qualtrics provides, we're able to really help businesses uh, improve their performance in a very deep, deep way. Culturally, uh, you know, the challenge of keeping our culture and keeping intact and feeling like Qualtrics is, is something that's fun to get to explore because that's not a, a new, just Qualtrics. I think you were telling me earlier about Accenture and Accenture has acquired a number of companies yep. and, and tried to keep 
the culture of the individual companies intact and, and being able to measure, knowing what your values are and then measuring against that, you, you don't ever get too far afield from what you really stand for yeah. if you're doing that continuous measurement. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting, right? It's, it's uh, super fun. It's, I think it's, we're, it's, you know, I feel like we're uh, inventing a category and yeah. I'm inventing a, a C-suite role and it's just exciting, exciting for me. So in that reinvention, in that invention of a new role, the chief experience officer, if you were talking to your younger self way back, you know, not that back, not that far <laughs> back, but um, what would you, would there be anything that you would do differently? Would you be, would, would there be anything that you'd be going, that's, that's the experience that I really need to make this role? Because when, when we said like you're taking product and people together, they're, they're very big kind of different right. uh, parts of the spectrum, I guess. Right. Uh, I, what would you be sort of saying to your, yourself as you started your career? Well, when I first started uh, at Microsoft, there was, we were really focused on the technology and exposing everything about the technology. And I had been a developer for, before joining there. So um, I quickly realized that we had all the technology, but we weren't really making what people wanted. We were ex excited about showing all the things the product could do. So you had check boxes and radio buttons and all this bells and whistles and all these ways to customize everything that you're doing. But it wasn't really, it was focused on having you learn the tool. And so early on, I recognized that it was more about the experience than it is about the technology. I mean, there's all those famous studies about beta versus VHS and all those things where not necessarily the best technology wins, it's about the experience. And so early on in my career, that was my focus. But it took me a long time for that to become my complete focus. I was always pushing, pushing to get there and get people to stop thinking about the tool and think more about the tasks. Mm -hmm. So I think I would have pushed myself to do more earlier about the experience. I, I feel like I had a glimmer of that, but it took me probably 20 years before I realized that it was all about that. I didn't have to, uh, the technology is definitely important and it, and it uh, provide you the opportunity to create great experiences, but the end goal is the experience, yeah. not the tech. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And I mean, it's amazing, your, you know, your career in terms of, in terms of what you, the change and transformation. I feel like I've kind of come driven. full circle in my career. In yeah. fact, the Qualtrics headquarters in Seattle is one next door to where I started my first job in technology. So it's yeah. just actually really full circle. Yeah. And, and just in terms of, I guess, just to, just to close out, um, I, think, I think, you know, we, we kind of all agree experience is, is absolutely where it's at in terms of competitive advantage. And absolutely. it's the thing we need to pay the most attention to, both for our customers, our citizens, and our employees. Um, what do you think is the next, the next thing, though, that's going to be important about, you know, experience management and, again, you know, continuing to close that gap? I think the next stage is really starting to understand the connection between different things. We talked about how the culture is kind of the start of transformation and how, you, how your culture shows up in the products you create, the customer experiences, and how that affects your brand. We're just at the beginning of understanding those connections and those measurements and those numbers. And so you know, sometime in the not too distant future, the, you know, the CSAT numbers, the things that we use today to measure success of our business are, are going to change and they're going to be a, a combination of, of experience and operational data from those different parts of the business. Yeah. So more change. More change. Excellent. Brilliant. Listen, thank you very much, Julie, for kicking us off. Um, fantastic to, to share your thoughts well, thanks, on experience Vicky. management. It was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.